right, so this is Liz, aka Talking Mongoose, for Virtual Ponies Blog, and I have two guests with me. Uh, one that you may have seen from the last review for Equus. This is this is Heather, <laughs> aka Beauty Curl 1510, and we do not have Carly this time. We have a third person joining us. Uh, if you are on DeviantArt, you might know her. This is uh, WS Top Deck, aka Christine. Say hello. hello. We'll know all three of us from a comic that you may or may not have seen on the blog called Winter Accessories, where uh, Heather and Christine came back from a tax store and Heather had a blanket hood on top of her head. Christine was the one consoling me after I fell off the couch. <laughs> so we're all gathered here today to talk about our experience with the play known as War Horse. We all went to go see it sometime in, in late winter when it first came out in Lincoln Center. We got to see the play before it was officially really playing. It opened on Broadway in 2011. It was originally based off of a novel. It is a children's fiction novel by Michael Morpurgo. Uh, and the synopsis via Wikipedia uh, is, at the outbreak of World War I, Joey, young Albert's beloved horse, is sold to the cavalry and shipped to France. His rider, Captain Nichols, is killed while riding Joey. The horse is soon caught up in war, death, disease, and a uh, fate to take him to an extraordinary odyssey serving on both sides before finding himself alone in no man's land. But Albert cannot forget Joey, and still not old enough to enlist in the British army, he embarks on a dangerous mission to find his horse and bring him home to Devon. The big thing about this play is that there are no real horses, it was all done with um, handspring puppets, and that was like the real draw because it's like there's no way you could ever adapt this to the stage. Yes, real no. horses plus stage equals bad. Yeah, usually a lot of cleanup too. Okay. Yeah, so you can't gallop on the stage. Especially in a little stage like Lincoln Center. <laughs> a very small stage. So when, when we got there, uh, it was just this interesting stage setup. It was just lo lo looked like a ripped piece of paper across the top of the stage, and it was another like black box theater kind of thing. Everything was very minimalistic, and we had amazing seats. They were uh, awesome seats. If you guys go to see this, if anyone's listening to this, do not get the first row. You want the third or fourth row back. That's You're stage more level. level. Yes, yes. Uh, otherwise, you'll be sitting there. Ah, craning your that neck. That looks great. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get a crick I, in your neck real fast. It opens up. It's all, you know, World War One. We start off with the introduction of the little baby Joey, which is not a kangaroo. It is the little baby full of Joey, the horse who is our main protagonist. And the puppet for the baby Joey is just all wood and mesh and just these different fiddly bits. Yes, straight legs. Yes. Yeah, no, there is no, no bend in the legs. No they just kind of make cute little realistic sounds of him cropping grass and going. And, and if you're a horse person, you just see this thing on stage. You're like, oh, it's adorable. <laughs> and and there aren't just horse puppets in the play. There are birds. There there's a very entertaining goose. Yes, watch for the goose. He is funny. Get this little foal who, who's now brought to auction. And he was the result of a passionate night between a draft mare and a thoroughbred stallion. He's a hunter. He's a, he's a, he's hunter. a hunter. He's a hunter. So it gets into this, um, in the middle of an auction war between these two brothers, the, the Narakots. Poorer of the two brothers is the one who ends up losing, which is what the richer brother kind of intended. So, yeah, so he, he has to pay a outstanding sum for this little hunter. Yeah, this little useless be, hunter. useless for the family who works on a farm. Yeah. And he needs a horse to pull. But he's a hunter, so he can't pull. For whatever reason. Once again, because first. it's because it's not a draft horse, it can't pull. Apparently. And his son, like, instantly falls in love with this little foal, and, and the poor kid probably has a crappy home life because the horse becomes his absolute best friend. But you know, any any horse person can kind of relate with like, yes, ponies are friends. Okay. First the the foal is very, very nervous around him, you know, he's away from his mom, and they show the nervousness of the baby, like, it won't even come near him, and there's this very touching scene with a cute little bucket behind his back trying to get the foal to get close to him. They have the friendship start to grow, and they transition. If you see this, oh if, if it's wait not for it. wait, wait for, for the transition, it. it is gorgeous, and everyone, when, when the horse comes onto the stage, you're like, holy crap! It's like an Aragon, where she grows from a little baby dragon to this huge thing, except better. The full-grown horse puppets are insane. They are intricate. They are well put together. The they actors behind them, they're larger than life. Yes, they are huge. larger than an average horse is. <laughs> and the way it's set up is you have someone for the front legs, someone for the back legs, and someone for the head. And if you're a horse- The head is outside of the horse. Yes, the guy is outside, so the, 
The horse looks like Sleepnir because he's got like eight legs. Yes. But they they dress up the the people puppeteering it in the same period style clothing that everyone else is wearing, but their clothing is all the same color of the horse they're manipulating. And the ears move, the tail moves, all the actors make the voices for the horses, and it's it's funny, um, I have the, the DVD that shows the making of it, where an interesting fact they found is that the lung capacity for the horse is the same amount of lung capacity it is for three people, and that just happens to be how many people are puppeteering this thing, so it worked out perfectly. Uh, another neat thing is that People ride these things. They get on their backs and they are riding people. They actually found out when they were training for having people ride that it was very interesting to note that when the person riding had no balance, the people underneath had trouble balancing themselves because they were trying to carry something that was above their heads. Compared to actually riding, you know, if you're unbalanced on your horse, you know, you're throwing him off balance. And a fun side effect of being a horse person looking at the puppet is that you kind of have an idea of who your A, B, and C would be from your friends. It's kind of like thinking about who the A, B, and C would be from, you know, the human centipede, only a lot less gross. And we're not even going to go into that. The the father is, is a drunkard, and he does not like Joey, useless animal. He comes up with the ultimatum that this horse has to learn how to pull or else he's gone. And so his idea of training the horse, he goes out and beats it because... Yeah, that's a good way to train a horse. Uh, he ends up, we have this whole montage of, of him teaching Joey how to pull, and Joey is, is very ornery, and he's just not into the whole I'm a workhorse sort of a thing, and it, it was interesting in the, in the special features of the making of it that they came up with a personality for Joey that was, he's supposed to be almost like a horse version of Russell Crowe, where he's big, he's strong, and he's misunderstood. <laughs> they, he ends up training him how to be a pulling horse, and... Yay, he gets to stay, but then, like, the very next day, his father takes him to sell him to the cavalry, because he's a jerk. I'll say because- DRINKING MONEY! The dad's a jerk, the mother is a saint, and there's just a random goose running around. In Lincoln Center, all of the actors are American. They only had three months to learn how to do the play, to work with the puppets, to get everything together, when the group in Britain- uh, was able to have three years getting all of the horse stuff together. Like, they actually got to meet horses in person, ride them, see their behavior, learn their, their motions and everything. The video of the making of has the British team, and it's insane. And unfortunately, if you watch that, you'll notice that the American team isn't nearly as refined because they just didn't have as much time. I mean, they're probably a lot better now from when we saw the play. The play was supposed to only run until April, and we're recording this in late December, and it's still in Lincoln Center. Because so they kept extending it because everyone wanted to see it because it's still sold out. Yeah, yeah. kept selling out. Mm -hmm. It's it's an amazing play, and and yes, go see it. Don't let our spoilers ruin anything for you. Just go see it. Um, yeah, if you've read the book, these are not spoilers. Anyway. Yeah, so, or if you've seen the movie already. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, yeah, we're, no we're, spoilers. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, we're going to re we're do another recording for that one when we see it. But uh, after he ends up going enlisting in, into the cavalry, one of the, the generals, uh, Captain Nichols, Captain, sorry, uh, comes up and tells the boy, tells Albert, you know, I will take care of your horse, and if I can, I will bring him back. And apparently the captain had seen, had seen Albert and Joey riding across the countryside and drew pictures of them, and he knew the horse. And so he, he promised him, you know, I will bring him back. Albert wants to enlist right away so that he can get into the same cavalry regime as, as Joey's being brought into, but he's too young to enlist, so he can't do it. Meanwhile, his cousin, who is the son of his uncle who got into the bidding war with his father, is enlisted. Narakot's all over the freaking place right now. Um, what ends up happening after that is Captain Nichols ends up dying in battle during a cavalry charge. So there goes that promise. And Joey's kind of absorbed into the cavalry and kind of ends up moving around. He's, um, he trades sides a couple times. A couple times. <laughs> The way they handled speech was hysterical. Mm -hmm. Was it hysterical was amazing. Oh for for doing it in a play where you can't have subtitles. Yes, so people can't talk in different languages. They, they, they just talk with accents, yeah. and they act like they have no idea what the other people are saying. Essentially, you're watching and listening to these people speaking in English with different accents, but they can't understand. But they they can't no actually point. understand each other. So the little, the little French girl and the big German. Soldier in Europe said, Joey. Joey! 
there's an adorable little French girl in it, and and it's it's very well done. <laughs> Joey ends up running into this other cavalry horse uh, called Topthorn. Beforehand. He met him in the cavalry, and they actually had it out. Yeah. And watching the fight scene between them, yeah. that was fun. But yeah. um, so anyway, yeah. So they, but, they so met he knew each other, but they reunited on the battlefield. Yeah. So they they kind of end up traveling together. So they were part of the same cavalry and. They didn't just take a, another horse puppet that was just milled out and then give it a different color. No, Topthorn has a completely different build. He has a completely different personality. He's acted completely differently. And he, he looks like he's full thoroughbred. So he's very refined. He's very high-stepping. Very leggy. 